everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm going to be sharing instructions for how to sew my latest pattern, which is a pair of paned breeches for one quarter scale boys. The first thing you'll want to do is lay out all of your pieces in order for both halves of the breeches. Each side should include a front, three middle panes, and the back all in one color of material, and then four accent panes in a different color. You'll lay them out like this, with one of the colored accent panes between each of the other pieces. We'll start the assembly process at one end, simply sewing each of these panels together in one long piece. This will be kind of time consuming because each side is made of nine pieces, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just be certain that when you assemble the pieces that the seams are all to the inside and that the second half gets put together in a mirror image of the first half so that when you lay them right sides together, the fronts are on the same end and the backs are on the same end. Since these pants are for my doll Rillin, who is one of my story characters, I also have a small story-related update to share, which is that I just got the first book in the series back from my editor. And right now, everything is on track for the first book to be released on March 28th. I'll be sharing more about the process once I get through the editing stage, but for now, let's get to sewing! Once the two halves are complete, you'll go back and finish the edge of every one of those seams with a zigzag or overlock stitch to help prevent fraying. While I'm doing that, I wanted to give a shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. You've been amazing the past few months with all the uncertainty going on with YouTube's changes, and it's been an enormous relief to me to not have to worry as I rebalance things and change some of my practices to ensure I won't be affected long term. Thank you all so much for your support. Once the edges are finished, there will be a lot of loose threads, so you'll want to clip all of those before moving on. Once the threads are trimmed, we can fold the panes. This part is really finicky and annoying in doll size, but I promise it'll look great when you're done. The goal is to fold the brown panes in until they completely cover the accent blue. But the accent panels are a little wider than half the width of the brown panes that go on top, so the blue will have to be gathered just slightly on the back side. This helps give it the fullness it needs for those accent panels to really poof out at the end. While doing this, you'll notice that the top edge of the front panel is sloped, and it looks sort of weird since it doesn't line up with the others. Don't worry about this right now, the slope is just there to help us line up the waistband later. You'll want to pin both top and bottom edges of both halves and then press them with an iron to make sure it stays flat. I switched my pearl headed pins for straight pins so I could press over the top of them. Then before removing the pins you'll want to sew along the very edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge, to hold these folded panels in place. I use my longest stitch setting and go very very slowly to ensure I don't hit any pins while sewing. I left the first bit in real time so you can see just how slow I go.
Sew both panels, top and bottom edges, then pull out the pins. Now we'll add the cuff to the bottom of the pant leg. Put the cuff against the leg with right sides together and you'll see the pant leg is a little wider than the cuff. No problem, grab one of the threads in the line of stitching we just ran and pull it to gather the bottom edge until it fits. How much or how little gathering it needs will depend on the fabric you use. Pin the cuff in place on both legs and sew it on. Make sure you set the stitch length back to a normal length before doing this step. Once the cuffs are attached, place the two halves together with right sides together and pin the curved center seam of the back pieces. We'll sew this curve closed with a straight stitch. Then switch to a zigzag or overlock stitch and finish the edge. Finishing the front is a little different. We'll start by finishing the edges of the curves separately using the zigzag stitch. Before I sew the front, I pull out the last few stitches of the thread we ran along the top edge that holds the folds in place. That way, I'll be able to use these threads to gather the waist to the waistband later. Then pin the front together about one third of the way up the curve. The upper two thirds will be the front opening, so only sew up to that pin and then backstitch to lock your stitches so it won't pull apart. Before we join the legs, finish the bottom edges of the cuffs on both legs with a zigzag stitch. Then fold the inseam closed and pin it shut. We'll sew it shut in a straight line starting at the cuff and going up the inside of the leg to the crotch turning and going down the other leg to finish at the other cuff. Then finish the edge. The front opening is a little tricky to finish, and while I do it by machine, you may prefer to sew this section by hand. You'll fold the edges of the front opening to the inside by about a quarter inch, and then sew these flaps down to create a neatly hemmed front opening. 
I couldn't get my fingers out of the way to show the folding part, but hopefully you can see it okay just pinned as it is. I sew down one side of the front opening, removing pins as I go, turn to sew across to the other side of the front, and then sew up that side. Be careful to keep the rest of the pants folded back away from the opening so that you don't catch any other fabric in this seam. Now for the waistband, the two halves get pinned together on both ends, and we'll just sew the ends closed, back stitching at the top and bottom edge to make sure this won't ravel. Before attaching the waistband, pull the thread along the top edge of either leg to gather the material. My thread broke when I pulled on it, so I have to run a white thread through with a needle to be able to make my gathers. That happens sometimes. To attach the waistband, you'll slide the pants fabric between the two layers of the waist and spread the gathers evenly. The waistband should be upside down and is still inside out so that the bottom edge is what you line up along the top edge of the pants. You'll notice the waistband comes down to kind of a point on the bottom edge. The edge of that point is what we line up along that sloped edge on the front panel. This gives us a nice downward dip in the center front when it's complete. The edge of the front opening should fit to the ends of the waistband, and I like to pin the two ends first and then even out the gathers in the middle. Eventually, your waistband should be pinned to the main part of the pants like this. Now you can sew these pieces together. I have to switch a few pins before I start because I put them on the wrong side, but then I run the seam, quick and simple, making sure to keep the waist flat while I sew, and ensuring there's no fabric folded underneath it. When I pull the waistband upright, it's made a nice, tidy seam on the inside. I find sewing this first instead of sewing the top of the waistband and then connecting the two pieces is easier on such a small garment. Before I turn the pants right side out so I can finish the top, I don't want to forget the cuffs. The cuffs should be folded in half so that the zigzagged edge falls right along the seam that connects the cuff to the bottom of the pant leg. Using a hand needle, I sew the cuff's edge in place with a whip stitch. Anchor both cuffs this way and then turn the pants right side out.
finish the waist, turn the top edge to the inside by about a quarter inch, and pin it in place. You have the option of sewing it close by hand using a hidden stitch, or by machine with a regular straight stitch. A hidden stitch won't be visible like the machine stitch, so some people may prefer that look in the end. But it doesn't bother me to have visible stitches, so I sew the top edge closed, back stitching at the beginning and the end. With the waistband finished, you have the option of adding eyelets and lacing to the front opening at this point and calling it a day, but I'm finishing mine with the cod piece. To sew the cod piece, put the two pieces of the outer fabric with right sides together and sew up the center seam, which is the straighter side. Try to keep the hem as narrow as possible. I sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Sew the lining the same way. I used blue because... contrast? I don't know, I like the idea. Then put the front and the lining together with right sides together, and sew down the curved side to the point, then back up the other curved side, leaving the flat top edge open. You may wish to backstitch at the top edge to keep your stitches from pulling apart when you turn this right side out. Turn the piece right side out, and then we'll finish the top edge the same way as the waistband, turning the edge to the inside and sewing it closed. This time I do use a hidden stitch, since it's such a small piece. In the past year, I've noticed that hand sewing has gotten a lot harder for me. I was never good at it, but the hypermobility condition I have really seems to have taken a turn in the past year, and my hands just don't have the strength they used to. It can be hard to do fine detail work when your joints bend backwards, so I make up for that by doing as much as I can by machine. There may come a day where I can't sew like I can now, so I want to enjoy it for as long as I possibly can, and learning to use my machine to the fullest of its ability is part of that. I know there are times my work looks a little awkward because my hands don't cooperate like I think they should, and honestly it probably bothers me most because it's a reminder that I'm not as physically capable as I was even a few years ago. But I do my best, and sometimes that's really all you can do. When the cod piece is finished, I connect the pointed tip to the very bottom of the front opening with a few hand stitches. Kind of like sewing on a button. Then it's time to try on the pants to determine where the closure should go. You can use buttons or eyelets or snaps like I'll be doing. The codpiece top should sit just a little below the top edge of the waistband. I 
I pull the front together, fold the cod piece up where I want it, and put in pins to mark where the snaps will go on the waistband. I leave the waist just a little loose because I want to have space to tuck in his shirt after I make it. I sew on the snaps, and then these pants are done. Even though I'll have to remove his lizard feet to get these on and off when his modifications are done, I think they turned out really cute, and they're exactly real in style. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss future videos like this. And since this is the beginning of the year, I'm still planning what patterns and designs I'll be sharing through the year. So if you have something you'd love to see, be sure to drop a comment below. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.